Hey, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to try and keep today's video uh, short and sweet. I'm going to be talking about uh, tangent bundles and vector fields. So uh, previously, I, I defined the notion of, of tangent space. You know, we got into a bit of the weeds with formal definitions, but, um, you know, also uh, I, I left proofs, um, you know, to be read because the, there really is a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to read, and I don't want to have to teach a full course on differential geometry in order to talk about uh, tensors in physics. Uh, but just give you an idea of some some of the the things that are involved in it. Um, so last time we talked about uh, the tangent space um, because we want to think about uh, fields, right? I want to think about having some sort of electric electromagnetic field or the flow of water, you know, all these basic things that we need in order to be able to talk about the real world, in order to be able to talk about physics. Um, even in abstract mathematics, you know, we, we want to sort of visualize these things. Um, and so the, the tangent space allowed us to talk about a direction or, or to find, you know, the, the rate of change of a function on our manifold um, at any given point. Right. So, so what I want now is, you know, say I've got some sort of manifold um, like this, and I would like to be able to to pick out a direction at each point. Right. That's basically what a, a, a vector field is is going to be. So, how can I define that? Well, think about it. We're we're for each point, we're choosing a vector. So. Um, um, what that should mean then is that I want to have a map, right? We can describe this in terms of a function. So the function at, at each point is going to take um, that point in the manifold and it's going to tell me a vector. Um, so, so really this is a map from the manifold into uh, the disjoint union of all of the tangent spaces. So disjoint because again remember we don't we don't want to think about these tangent spaces as sort of interacting they're their own uh, separate spaces at each point of the manifold uh, it describes the the tangent vectors uh, through that point so I should also impose a condition right I don't want my function you know if I'm at some point here in the manifold I don't want it to be assigning a tangent vector over here that doesn't really make any sense right so so uh you know, I want it to be the case that uh, f um, uh, at the point p uh, for for all p lies inside um, that particular uh, tangent space. We'll see that there's a a slightly different way to reformulate this definition in a second. Um, but now the other thing too, this isn't quite enough for the things I want to talk about that have uh, physical meaning or even just nice mathematical properties uh, because. The current definition, you know, I could just pick all sorts of wacky directions. There needs to be no consistency uh, among this whole shape. It's just a bunch of random directions, right? That's not really what I'm interested in because, you know, when we think about, um, again, like the flow of water or, uh, you know, an electromagnetic field, there's some sort of uh, consistency, right? That things sort of change smoothly. There aren't uh, sharp uh, turns or bends, you know, you can sort of imagine there's there's a nice flow to things, right? So how am I going to impose that condition? Well, the whole point of defining continuous or smooth maps in mathematics is that that's exactly what that formalization is, is doing. It's formalizing this intuitive notion of, of things that move smoothly. So the, the sort of obvious uh, uh, choice then is, is to demand that this be a continuous or, or even a smooth map. Um, now that's fine, but continuity is only defined for uh, topological space and smoothness only for uh, smooth manifolds. Um, and here we've just taken a union of sets, right? So um, somehow we need to make this into a topological space uh, in order to talk about continuity, but we don't want to just give it any sort of topology, right? Somehow it needs to be intrinsically related to this manifold. We could put all sorts of weird topologies on it, but we're interested in ones that are meaningful for the physical descriptions that, that we want to define. Um, well, 
and this relates to how we might reformulate this definition in a nicer way. Um, what we can do is, is we have a map, right? There's a sort of natural projection map going from um, our tangent bundle. So um, by the way, a notation for this, uh, we call this the tangent bundle. Sometimes we just call it TM. And by this, we mean this, this dis disjoint union uh, together with the topology. And how do we get that topology? Well, we have a map going this way, right? The projection map just sends, uh, you know, if the vector V uh, is in this tangent space, uh, then the map pi is simply going to send that vector to the point P. That makes sense, right? It's just sending all the vectors in the tangent space above the point P down to that point P. Now, the thing is, uh, M does have a topology, right? Um, and if we want to make, um, if we want to make a, a topology on here, we're going to do it by simply demanding uh, that the, uh, the map pi is continuous, right? So remember, uh, a, a map of topological spaces, um, uh, let's say, you know, let's say have a map going from, from x to y, uh, is said to be continuous if for every open set uh, u of y, the inverse image of u in x is an open set. So we're going to demand uh, that pi is a uh, continuous map, and this gives a topology on TPM. And in fact, we can uh, obtain a naturally from this, uh, from M, a manifold structure on TPM as well. Um, great. So, so we can talk about continuity, we can talk about smoothness. Um, and so this is going to be our definition of a vector field. Uh, that is, uh, a vector field is uh, simply the choice of a smooth map. So a smooth map, uh, sometimes we denote these uh, with a capital X. So it'll be a smooth map from M, uh, or rather, uh, yeah, a smooth map from our manifold N into its tangent bundle uh, and such that uh, we, we want to make sure, um, of course, I want to uh, encode uh, this definition that, that FP is in uh, uh, TM. So it should be that uh, uh, the bundle uh, uh, composed with the, the projection map um, uh, should be equal to 2P, right? In other words, this, this composition of maps is, is equal to the identity. Um, and that's it, right? So again, it, there's technical machinery going on here, um, but this is all inspired from the intuitive definition. What do we want? We want to assign a direction to every point on our abstract shape, and we want that direction to sort of change continuously to mimic electromagnetic or, or hydro something phenomenon. Um, yeah. Um, and so finally, um, why is this called the tangent bundle? Well, we're sort of bundling up these spaces, but uh, it's a particular example of, of something I'm going to go into more detail in the next video, a particular example of uh, what's called a vector bundle more generally, which in turn is, is a special example of uh, something that's called a fiber bundle more generally. Uh, so, so these come up you know, in all sorts of ways in, in abstract and, uh, you know, uh, mathematics and physics. Um, and we can see right here a good, a, a good reason why we would want such a thing, right? So, so by a vector bundle, I just mean, you know, we have some sort of abstract sh shape, some sort of abstract surface. Um, a vector bundle is, okay, I'm sweeping some things under the rug, but essentially it's, it, it, it's the choice of a, a, a vector space at each point. So at each point in your manifold, you, you assign uh, some vector space, um, like the tangent bundle, right? It's a very particular kind of, of vector space, and, and we glue those structures together so that it has a sort of nice, smooth coherency to it. So a vector bundle, uh, more generally, is, is we can take any sort of vector space we want, sort of imagine it hovering above each point in our manifold, and then gluing it together in some sort of topologically coherent fashion. So next time, uh, more details on that. And uh, we're actually inching pretty close uh, to the definition of tensors in physics. So uh, please uh, don't hesitate to ask
questions and stay tuned.